What's up, Gruntworks Nation? The Big Earl is always asking, why is China hoarding food? Experts say that China is hoarding a massive amount of food. They will soon have over two-thirds of the globe's corn reserves, over half of its rice, and over half of its wheat. But when asked about it, China lies. One China expert says they, of course, will never admit to something like that. Well, what does China know that we don't? When it comes to global food shortages, China is the canary in the coal mine. You see, China is the world's number one food importer. They rely on the rest of the world to keep their people fed. So they can't afford to mess up. Or there will be riots, civil panic, or even worse, when over a billion people can't eat. What does this mean for Americans like you and me? Two words, food shortages. That's why it's a smart idea to stock up on a kit of best-selling Four Patriots survival food. Create your own stockpile of the best-selling Four Patriots survival food kits. Hand-packed in the USA. The kits are compact and stack easily. They have different delicious breakfasts, lunches, and dinners. And their five-star reviews on the website rave about the flavor and the taste. Right now, you can get 10% off your first purchase of Four Patriots Survival Food by typing in the code VTTGW at checkout. Just go to fourpatriots.com and use the code VTTGW to get 10% off your first purchase of Four Patriots Survival Food. That's fourpatriots.com. Use the code VTTGW. With us today, we got Joe, Trigger Joe Britson. All right, let's go. Boom! To try to get a matchup with a gun. Oh! Goes the way! Francis is gone! This is just a fist. When I start throwing it around, I can leave one hell of a mess. Multiple occasions. Wow, it looks like they're gonna swing oh, the very in. And he wasn't kidding. Wow! It's very rare. What a finish! Another one. It really poses the question what do you want to do? Do you want to take a chance and risk getting knocked out? Oh my god! Oh my god. Trying to take care of business, trying to get the goal. Oh, it's a knockout! Oh my god! It's a god. knockout! And it's closing it! Trying to finish it! Hit it's over! Because I'm going to take this foot, and I'm going to whop you on that side of your face. There's nothing, I mean, thing you can do about it. Oh, oh. Heck yeah. oh. oh. Buck is brought to you by Modelo. Oh. I killed it! Oh, we have a new nickname. Okay, we have William Send It Seven Pearson. All right, other than that, we used to call him Willie Pete. We used to call him the Mad Russian. I think you've had enough. No? Now you've had enough. Bitch. Wow. How good is this? Finish him! Another one. Everybody gets triggered. It's just if you become a pansy. Right? That's in the book of Roll. I'm think not I... surprised, motherfuckers. You called down the thunder. Well, now you've got it. You've got to be very careful. Trash Talker and Squad Grunt Workstation. We are live for this early edition of UFC 
pick them and big Earl's NFL locks, which I will brag about. I hit all three last week. No big deal. All right. So if, if you bet on me, you made some money. Uh, can't say so much. Detroit. Yeah, Kelf, yeah, yeah. Can't say can't say so much uh, for the fight guys. They didn't win shit last week. Um, you know, probably because they were. Uh, I did fine. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Uh, but anyways, uh, thanks for joining us live. Uh, remember, like and share. Uh, it's election time, so any veteran group during election time is put to the bottom of the algorithm. So uh, please uh, do us a big favor and uh, give us a share and a like. Again, big shout out to our new partner for Patriots. You heard my dumbass on there with the ad, but uh, if you like uh, outdoor survival food and all that kind of stuff, uh, generators, getting off the grid a little bit, being able to survive, uh, they got great stuff there. So go there and put in the code BTTGW and get yourself a discount. Also, up in the corner there, you got the QR code. Uh, that's uh, for our merch if you want to get the baseball tee or uh, you got the 22, you got Oh, you got the Zen master right there. Uh, Sun Tzu says, uh, when in doubt, put two in the head. I think that was written somewhere. So, uh, uh, the, which one is that? Face, or oh, two, yeah. two to the yeah. chest, the face gets the rest. Right, yeah. The Dalai yeah. Lama said that. It, that's what right. it says. I think so. Big hit of Dalai Lama. Yeah, big. So he hits the ball down to the base of the 7,000 foot crevice. Uh, <laughs> but, hey, uh, that's okay. So thanks for joining us. And again, stick around. All the way until the end, uh, because you'll get the big girls NFL locks, but definitely stick around for the first part of the show because that's where you make your money with your locks and your parlays from our experts. So with our experts, without further ado, we got VTT's Trigger Joe. Uh, We got the guy whose nickname switched 400 times. We got Sergeant Hulka, all right, our big toe. And then we got VTT's Drunken Cyborg, uh, which by the her point total so far this year, she's got to be drunk. All right, and again, <laughs> drop that it's, it's that the tenth mountain. It's the tenth mountain, <laughs> and that's our, that's our our favorite sponsor because they give us booze. Uh, so go to tenthwhiskey.com and use the code BTT. All right, and get yourself a discount on some great bourbon, whiskey, cordial, all that good stuff. So again, please, if you're watching, like and share, and then make throw a comment in there. Tell us who you think's going to win the fight. Uh, and if you got guys, any of you guys ever want to come on and challenge the experts? Yeah, there's money involved in it for you. All right, you got a chance to win money. We've only had to pay one person. All right, everybody else get their ass whooped. So uh, go ahead and give it a shot. I didn't How you guys doing? Ass whooped. It was one point. That's an ass whooping. What? Hey, L's and L. L's and L. L's and L. Ten percent truth and a, lo- a loss is ninety percent truth. So, I'm great because they take the fights away, and I find other ways to bet. So Victor Wembayana, thank you for having two blocks last night. Could you complete <laughs> my seven leg parlay? Fuck you, Candle. Sorry, had to do oh, it. Oh man, man, yeah, it is what it is. But I, how, how you guys doing? What's going on, Bill? Yeah, it's almost like you're a ghost. I don't even know who you are anymore. That's the fair statement. New job is uh, quite busy. As soon as this show's over, I got to go to another show. We're hosting a comedian down here. Um, so yeah. But I'm just I'm still watching the fights. I did. Oh, did Bill, it's not like our command sergeant major or anything. I mean, yeah. yeah. I, I heard they were out of broccoli at the commissary. I need you to get down there. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I won't deal with that. Disrespect <laughs> from you. So I do deal with power outages, which happens. So that, that's a thing. There's a kid stuck on the escalator again. Thank you. Right? Thank go get her. Go get her. out of their stands because there's wild yeah. players. Get down here, dickhead. Yeah. Sorry. Well, all right. Then, then drunk and cyborg. What's going on? A whole lot of nothing. Drinking whole lot of nothing. There you go. All right. Let's get right down to it. Now, again, we have our new point system where I assign a fight uh, prior to the show. Sometimes, you know, a couple of days, sometimes an hour. I don't give a shit. Um, again, it's these experts' jobs to know what's going on. So that, I mean, I, I should be able to give them the fight live. And they should know what's going on. But uh, here we go. We get to start with uh, Bill. He's going to call an undercard fight uh, first. And then he's going to get right into the, the first one. And it's got some guy with a really, really weird name. That, that Rhinot dude over there. So we got Rhinot versus uh, Dos Santos. Bill, this is your point fight. What do you got here? Luckily, finally you give me an easy one. Um, hey, for the fight fans out there, this is actually – a pretty easy one to bet. It's run out all day. I'm not even going to attempt to do his last name. It's 
Just go with Ryan out on this one. Fuck Ratina off. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Go oh, we'll fuck on that three teen off. Um, but luckily, like I said, this is a relatively easy one. He's he's a heavy favorite. As of right now, uh let's see where he's at. He's a minus 340 on uh, DraftKings, Bet MGN, and FanDuel. You're looking at between 375 and a minus 355. Uh so pretty, pretty easy bet to go with. It's run out all day. Uh Santos. Is hit or miss, and some of his wins were even by split decision. So he's kind of got a he's kind of got a chin. He has lost by TKO before in a later round, but he's just he fights long, boring fights, and he's got a decent chin. Uh, but he doesn't stand a chance with Renat on this one. Renat's got hands, but like I said, I think Santos is going to drag this one out a little bit. But for sake of points, I got to get a little bit crazy on this one. Uh, Renat is a lock for me, so all you betters out there, if you want to write down my locks, which I'll talk about later, Renat is a lock for me. I'm actually going to go with a submission. Uh, first round submission on this one. Renat all day, but I think first round, before they work up all their sweat, I think Renat's going to get his hands on this guy, take him down the ground, and sink up. Maybe a guillotine choke on this one. He's got a bunch of guillotine choke wins on his repertoire. So I'm going to go guillotine choke, Renat. Uh, about mid first round against Santos. Very nice, very nice. All right, so there you have it, fight fans. That's his point pick. Now we can go back to the main card and the first fight of the main card. We got a middleweight fight, and we got Vieira at nine and two versus Armin Petrosian at nine and two. Now you got to take a really close look at this fight, and I, I mean. There's just one guy looks like he can take a punch, and the other guy looks like he runs women in Amsterdam. All right, I'm gonna go with uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna go with Vieira by knockout in the first round over this human trafficker Petrosian. All right, let's That's stay so with true. Bill. <laughs> let's stay with um, <laughs> You're so true. Does he not look, look like? Does he not look he like? He does look like he probably hey, runs women. No, in Somebody you looking for a good time? Elevator in the you like, hangover. You like my girls? You like my for girls? A guy, Pick one. Pick one. For a guy who spent a lot of time in Europe, like I did, I spent a lot of time in Germany. My apartment was only four hours from Amsterdam. I've been to Amsterdam a lot. My <laughs> wife, Tamara, lived in Amsterdam, was one of her first stations in the Air Force. Armin Petrosian absolutely looks like a guy in the street corner selling girls in the red light district. Yeah. This is so upsetting to me. This is so upsetting. <laughs> he 100% does. Now, you like, moving on you to like the... human traffickers or not? I don't know. I mean, some people do. Uh, Especially Vegas old white guys. <laughs> so, Vegas doesn't like this fight. Um, if you go on DraftKings, Pachosi is a minus 105, Rivera is a minus 115. But as you move right and you go to MGM, Caesars, FanDuel, points bet, it's right around they're both at minus 110 or either way, 115, 108. Pretty even fight in Vegas. Uh, however, for me, uh, I'm going with Vera on this one. Petrosian, he's looked okay. He's a decision king. Since I mean, he won contender series with a KO, but since he's been in the UFC, it's been a split decision, 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 decision. Uh, he lost to Barajo in a decision. Rivera, Petrosian wants nothing to do with this guy on the ground. Um, Vera's coming off of a, a submission with, off of Cody Brundage. Uh, it could go either way, just like Vegas said. I'm going to run off Vera by decision. I think uh, it might end up being a pretty boring fight to watch. They, they both like decisions as well. Um, I'm going to go with Vera's eventually going to get Pachosian on the ground. I think Vera's just a better ground fighter than Pachosian. Uh, so I got Vera by uh, submission. I'm going to go with late second round. All right, very nice. And uh, Raymond Trueblood saying good evening. What's up, Raymond? How you doing, buddy? Uh, all right, let's go. Uh, let's go, to Joe here. Joe, who you got in this fight? Yeah, I got Petrosian. Um, okay. Listen, I've watched. I've watched Vieira's fights since he fought Chris Curtis. Since uh, you know, I watched the Cody Brundage fight, and look, Cody Brundage is the bottom of the barrel, the middleweights. He he he's not really anybody to judge you know put you know say you're above the level of you know a top 10 guy by beating them chris curtis is 
basically what I think Rodolfo Vieira's kryptonite is, and that's a guy who will stay in your face and throw and, and throw strikes because Vieira's not a striker. He's got nine wins. He's got eight submissions. Um, Petrosian stays on the feet and blasts that leg kick and stays more aggressive and does what he does. I think he wins the fight. Um, I just I haven't seen the aggression out of Vieira, and that's when my money's been on him. He's always made me bite my nails. I think Petrosian wins a 29-28 decision. And there's a reason why the odds are so close on this fight, because both guys uh, look like they have enough defense to stuff the other guy's offensive game. And um, I, I'm just going to say that Petrosian stays on the outside, lands enough strikes to win round one. And if Vieira can't get it on the ground, he's in trouble. Because that is also a big mismatch, is them standing on the feet. Um, I think Petrosian's a better striker. He's a better boxer. Um, his leg kicks are brutal. So I think he wins two out of the three rounds and stays out of the submission game with Vieira, which is where Bill's right. He does not want to go to the ground. And I think he does enough to stay off the ground and wins a stand-up fight. All right. Very nice. Stax, what say you on this one? So on this one, I've got Petrosian as well. Um, I think defensively, he just he has better defensive movement. Um, he's better at staying just out of range and then coming back in. And he has better offensive reads, in my opinion, than Vieira. Now, again, if, if Vieira can get him onto the ground, great. Then we're going to have some issues. But honestly, I think Petrosian's good enough with his offensive strikes as well as his defensive movement that he's going to do a dance around him, keep getting points, pick him apart just a little bit. And it's going to be pretty even in my opinion, either way. So I'm going to, I'm going to go with the 29, 28 as well. So basically All right. they support child trafficking. Well, that, yeah, they, I mean, you, you kind of jumped <laughs> on my thunder there. I was going to be like, well, apparently only Bill and I are yeah. the ones that are stand for justice and for women's rights, you just know, because- and, and, you know, just, Tra- trafficking, you know, we might as well just put a bunch of fentanyl on these women yeah. and send them, yeah, send them overseas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so dramatic. Yeah. Apparently, you got, apparently, you two have never seen Taken. So. Yeah. <laughs> was All right. Film. Now we get to the second part of the night, which happens to be a point fight uh, for... Uh, oh, is, this a, is this what I gave you? Stacks? Yeah. I gave you this one, didn't I? Yes. Yeah, we got Chow Borello. All right, and he's coming in at 14 and 1 versus Magmadoff, Magagumadoff at 25, 5 and 1. Now, I mean, if you want to talk about a chin on a guy, all right, you look at this Chow dude. All right, so I, I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going to go with Chow, but by disqualification, because I think a bus over there is going to get angry that he keeps trying to hit this guy in that fucking beautiful chin and nothing happens he's going to result a dirty pool so i'm going chow by disqualification all right stacks for your point break this one down all right so on this one i've got burrow i think is is that how you say his name uh they, it, i've heard burrow and i've heard barajo i'm going with Boralio, chin. and i'm like where are you getting the e sound what is happening i'm gonna call yeah. him burrow uh so <laughs> that'll work yeah i'm, I'm just full send in that America. so I, I think he moves far too quickly for what Magomedov does. I think Magomedov, although he's he's got some really good striking, I think Brow just is is gonna pick him apart and outmove him because if you watched what Magomedov did against Strickland, like he was doing okay in that first round, and in the second round it was where Strickland and he's not a Strickland's not a fast fighter. Oh, did stacks? Did we lose stacks on our point am pick? I back? You're back. Your, okay. your voice is back. I don't know what happened. Um, nah, probably the fucking FBI plugging your computer now that you're support Petrosian. Oh, uh, that, I, I that, probably. That's, that's apparently one hundred percent what happened. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, Epstein. With with what he did against Magomed or against Strickland. Um, he was doing all right. And then as soon as Strickland, who is not a fast, fast striker, picked up the pace, Magomedov lost all his shit. Like, could not keep up, couldn't keep in the fight. And I honestly think Burrell just completely demolishes him on volume of strikes. And I'm really, really hoping for a flying knee KO in the second round. 
I would love to see the, that flying knee actually land solid. All right, so you're calling Borello by knockout, second mm -hmm. round. Nice, nice. All right, let's go to Joe here. What do you got? Besides a mouthful of shit. <laughs> I thought I'd have some pretzels yeah, while Tash was doing her breakout. No, no. Um, a, lot a lot of feedback. feedback. Is, that Is that me? me? Is that you, John Wayne? It's probably Stacks. So <laughs> Is that me? Is that, Is that you? That you? <laughs> that no. Yeah. Um, I got Burrell in this one. You know, I, I actually made the mistake and went against Strickland with Magomedov and didn't realize that he's a quitter. Um, to watch Sean Strickland break him down and Barajo's on a five-fight win streak. He, he's not, and I tell you, that's another trick that they're pulling. He is not 5'10". If he's 5'10", then I'm 5'8". Because that dude's a legitimate six-foot-one. Uh, Magomedov has himself listed at six foot two. Watch him in the way off, or the, the they're going or the way in the face off. They're about chin to chin, and I think Barajo's on a absolute tear. Magomedov showed us what he can do when the pressure's on. This is in Brazil. Um, Barajo's supposed to win this fight, and I think he's going to. Um, I, I think he gets it to the ground somewhere in the second round and taps uh, Magomedov out by submission. All right, very nice. Bill, Sergeant Hulka, our big toe, what say you? Uh, I actually agree with the same outcome as Joe, and part of that is due to what Stack said. Um, if, if you would have watched that Maga Meta with Strickland, I mean, he fought a guy not known for his speed and striking at all. Strickland is just very – he's kind of an odd striker, and, he, and he's methodical, but he's not fast. And Maga Meta couldn't handle – the speed of Strickland, which is really odd. Um, and Barajo, he's he's a smart fighter. I mean, the, I mean, the way he's submitted guys on the ground, the way he held Petrosian and won a pretty good decision over Petrosian, uh, Barajo's, he's on the rise, and I think he's a legit problem for that weight class. Um, but I think Magomedov is just too slow for this, and he doesn't have the same fight IQ as Barajo does. So I got Bravo with the with the same outcome as Joe, you know, late second round submission. All right, there you have it, fight fans. Let's get to the third fight of the night of the main card, and it's a heavyweight fight. No points on this one, uh, but we got Nascimento at ten and one versus Mays at ten and five. Now, don't tell me that there won't be an upset here, but that's what the big girl's going with. You see what I did there, Bill? Don't tell, huh? Uh -huh. Don't. Uh, eh, I get it, get it. All right, let's uh -huh. stay with let's stay with Sergeant Hulka. All right, break this one down for us. Um, so weirdly, these two have fought before, and Nazi Mento has beaten Mays with like a weird su submission. Um, Nazi Mento is a minus two hundred on this one. Uh, am I throwing this in any of my parlays? Absolutely not. Um. But you know what? I'm actually going to throw Maze in as my drafting sleeper. As a, I think he might pull off an upset. Like, for all the people watching, both these guys are trash heaps, and they just needed a fight to fill a card. Both these guys suck. They will never be a contender. Uh, they're just garbage piles. I mean, just look at them. Um, they're fighting for beer money, probably. Uh, Nasi Ameno is a minus 200 favorite for the most part. Uh, but if you look at Nasi Amento's last, he, he's won his last two fights with split decisions against Tanner Bozer and Latifi, which I guess is kind of impressive that he made it to a split decision with them. Lost to Dawkins in the first round. Mays just came off a, a win with Andre Olofsky. Now, granted, Olofsky is like 72 years old. Um, lost to, I guess, to Sakai before that. Listen, who knows who's going to win this fight? I'm picking downtown Mays. With a lucky TKO in the second round, I think they're both fat and out of shape. I think they're going to start wearing out after the first round. Am I putting it in my parlay? Absolutely not. But if you want to look for a cheap DraftKings sleeper, throw him down to Mays, second round KO. Very nice. I would have had Joe break that down, but he's got a hoagie with two hands and no eye contact in his <laughs> mouth. So I was giving him some time to, to, to finish his job. But let's go to uh, Drunken Cyborg. What do you got here? 
so on this one i was also very i was very back and forth on this fight i am this is this is one that i if i miss i won't rewind to make sure i understand what happened if i'm being completely honest i'm not excited about this fight um it's a great way to put it by the way like watching both of their other fights to prepare to see what i thought on this i was like oh i hate you both i really do you're both awful um However, the only the only real pull that I had here to go off of is that I I do love my grapplers and Nascimento does have that grappling capability, not great grappling capability, but he does have the capability. I think Maze overwhelms him with strikes for the first like round round and a half maybe. Uh, overwhelms him in striking. They both get super tired because they're both fat and out of shape and have been drinking far too much beer, and then. They go to the ground, and I think Nascimento second round gets a sub. That's that's where I'm gonna go. All right, awesome, Trigger Joe. What say you? Yeah, couldn't agree more. And Dante Mays fights out of Jackson Wink, Nick. Gross. Just so you just well, so don't, you know. don't tell me that. All right. Well, watching fat body Augusto Sakai nullify Mays's game by leaning on him, and then he chins Orlovsky like D F D. All right, Nascimento is uh, – they go to the ground, it's over with. Okay, I, I don't know that Nascimento can get in there right away, and I don't think there's a finish here. But I'm going to say Nascimento leans on him and makes it boring enough and wins two out of three rounds, or he gets knocked out. But I'm going to lean towards Nascimento winning a very close snooze fest of a decision. Very nice, very nice. And let's stay with Trigger Joe as we get to the co-main for his point. But before we do, again, big shout-out to our sponsors, 4Patriots. Go to 4Patriots.com. Uh, maybe we'll get a banner ad going across uh, the screen one of these days, uh, seeing as that's what we promised them for our sponsorship. But no big deal, Chris. There it is. All right, so go to 4Patriots.com. Uh, use the code BTTGW. Get a discount. You can also go to that QR code up top. Uh, and that will also give you a discount. I mean, hey, they're paying us. They might as well do what they're paying us for. Uh, and then uh, don't forget 10th Mountain Bourbon, which obviously our producers had too much of uh, to even you know put the right description on there or whatever. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll hug it out. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's go to the co-main. And uh, it's a welterweight fight. And we got Bonfim at 15-0 and 0 versus Dolby at 22-0. Four and one, and I could not be more excited not to pick this fight with these little boys fighting. So, Trigger Joe, take it away. They're not that little. I mean, these guys are going to walk into the cage at like a buck eighty. Yeah, kind of little, Joe. Uh, I, uh, all right. Well, take a body shot from one. Yeah, I will. I mean, that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, so, uh, again, you know, I, the first guy I, to say, maybe somebody will shut me up. You know, I've been, I've been, Bill and I have been on the Bomb Fiend Brothers since uh, Terrence McKinney got finished, like he'd never fought a fight in his life. Um, we'll fight on this card. <laughs> this card's in Brazil. Is Nicholas Dalby, you're all right, but you're going down, kid, and you're going to go down hard. Um, I honestly think that much of Gabriel Bonfim. I think he actually pulls off his signature guillotine on a guy that's never been finished. Uh, Dalby's 38 years old. He's meat. If you've seen Cinderella Man, it ain't going to happen that way. Um, I think Bonfim absolutely dominates in the striking, and Dalby's the kind of guy that he'll stick it out with you if you let him. And uh, these kids are aggressive. They remind me of that Vitor Belfort, Vanderlei Silva mindset where they're coming to finish you. And um, mm -hmm. dude's a finisher. His guillotine, it, you you will not get out of it. You'll break your neck before you do. And I think he's the first person to tap out Nick, Nicholas Dalby in his pro career. And uh, he wins by, oh, man, I've been waffling on this. But I'm going to go ahead and say late first round submission. Very nice, very nice. Okay, let's go to Cyborg. All right, the drunken Cyborg. What say you on this? So on this, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. You, you're wrong. You advise that uh, the other Bond theme brother is no longer fighting. On correct. This you were you were supposed to pick. Did we, we lose yeah. that fight? Yeah. It, yeah. it was uh, Ishmael versus yep. uh, Pinchel. They call me Ishmael. Um, yeah, that was another domination for the Bomb Fiend brothers. Yeah, Moby, I was Moby like, Dick. There's, there's 
absolutely no way he comes even close to a- anyway uh so technically only one of the bond Fiend brothers is fighting on this card which is upsetting to me now but it that is what it is um i now don't get me wrong i love dolby i do he is an absolute monster he's just great um and he will stand with you he just I, I love that man, but I'm going to be so sad to watch him get absolutely destroyed because that's all that's going to happen against Bond Fiend. He's going to take him out in the in the stand-up, and then he is going to get that submission. 100%, there's, there's no doubt in my mind that Bond Fiend gets that guillotine and just absolutely wrecks him. I did, however, give Dalby at least the benefit of the doubt on a like early round two submission. I'm hoping he at least lasts the first round. I would love to see him because of how tough he is and how much of a fight he has in him get through that first round. But honestly, I don't think he makes it past halfway through the second round. Um, Bonfim will finish him and it will be a submission in my mind. And there's, he's just an animal. The man is an animal. There's no stopping that shit. All right. There you have it, fight fans. Let's go to Sergeant Hulka. And get his take on this. I got Dolby by decision. No, I'm just messing with you. Bombing's going to absolutely. I got Dolby by first round knockout. <laughs> uh, Bombing's going to absolutely. See, I, I'm with Stacks. I, I'm a fan of Nicholas Dolby. I like I like the way he always brings it in his fights. But Bombing, he's not the one, man. Bombing is going to wreck his shit. Uh, I like Joe Wavered. I wanted to give Dolby the benefit of the doubt of the second round, but I just don't think he's going to do it. Bonfim's going to get his hands on him, and Dolby just doesn't have the ground game that Bonfim does. And Bonfim is an absolute animal on the ground. He's just at a different level than most of these guys are at. Um, and since he's won the Contender Series, he hasn't left the first round, and they've all been guillotine shows. Like Joe said, once that guillotine gets sunk on you, it, it's done. You're not getting out of it. Um, so I got Gabriel Bonfim by submission by guillotine choke in the first round. Very nice. Very nice. All right. Let's go to the main event. All right. And we got, somebody's got to explain this to me. I thought Derek Lewis won his last fight and then dropped his pants. Is that not, is that, that was a, a while ago. Is that not <laughs> a sign of retirement? Ago. Like, like what did he fight since then? A, a, a lot of times. Has he fought a lot of times since he took well, his pants Well, since he off? dropped his pants, he's fought a lot of times, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, I thought he retired. So, I guess I guess Derek Lewis is back. All right. And I, and I, I'm a big fan of Derek Lewis. Uh, but we got Almeida coming in at 19-2 and two versus Derek Lewis at 27-11. and 11. Now, we haven't been able to say this for over a couple of years, but we have a tie up at top. And so, I am going to go with Joe here. To lead us in the main event because he is tied for the lead after Bill's three goose eggs in a row. Even though he had one that was a softball, he screwed that one up too. But uh, Joe, what did I say screw you? It up? Yeah, nobody saw Jennifer Maya happening. Yeah, we we all got yeah. that. So I'll give Bill <laughs> the props that he deserves. I picked that one the same way. Um, the girl saw it, dude. <laughs> I I I don't like picking this fight so much just because what should happen is Almeida should use his athleticism to somehow trip Derek Lewis, get him on the ground, get those big arms and a head and arm triangle. But Derek Lewis is oddly effective in the first round. Okay, So I'm going to give the people watching the bet that I'm taking because it's plus money. And you're not going to find plus money on many bets in this fight, but it is DraftKings, the fight to start round two. It's plus 125. I think Lewis knows I cannot get taken down. I cannot get taken down. I think Almeida knows I cannot get hit by the right hand. I cannot get hit by the right hand. And I think in the second round, they start to throw a little caution into the wind and something starts to happen. I'm still going to take Almeida. Um, I'm going to take Almeida by actually by TKO. Um, And it's not really because he knocks him out, but it's going to be because Lewis is absolutely gassed, can't get off the ground. And uh, Almeida's given up probably 30 pounds of real mass. Um, The way they walk around, he's probably 30 pounds smaller. And he's not really going to be able to bully Derek Lewis and sub him the way he thinks he's going to. 
So I think it's going to be a gas late second round TKO for Jelson Almeida. Um, but if Derek Lewis knocks Almeida out in the first round, hey, what can I say? I'm sorry. He's done it to me too. Um, but like I said, what should happen is Jelton Almeida should win by submission. But I am betting this right this this fight to start round two. Otherwise, it could it, it, it's a wild card. And I'll take Jelton Almeida by second round ground and pound. Wild card. All right. Let's go to stacks. What do you got in this fight? The main event. Now wait, you're saying Derek Lewis has fought since he dropped his pants. A lot of times. Oh my god. Absolutely. No way. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, no, I'm so not buying obviously- it. Lewis has the strength to just absolutely knock Almeida the fuck out. However, I think Comma. he's much faster than Derek Lewis. I think his reads are better. He's going to stay out of that for that first round until Derek Lewis is completely gassed. That second round is when he really starts to get into it. And honestly, I'm I'm going to go if he gets him to the ground and subs him out round two. All right. All right. Bill, the former champ, what say you? <laughs> I, I th- aren't I still the champ until I lose? Uh, you know, here or there. I mean, we could go either way. Till next so, week. Yeah, till next <laughs> week. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm actually going with stacks on this one. I agree with both of them. Uh, I think Joe saying bet the fight to start the second round is actually a really great bet. And I agree with stacks. I think this is going to be a submission in the second round. I think Almeida is going to avoid that big right hand that Derek Lewis relies on. And here's the thing. Almeida has fought big hitters before, too. Maybe not as hard as Derek Lewis, but he's fought the big hitter. So what I mean by that, he knows how to, to stay away from it. Um, and Derek Lewis is going to start to gas out. Almeida is going to get his timing down, get a takedown, and Lewis is just going to turn into a turtle. Um, and Almeida is a vicious ground game. He's won a lot by submission. Um, so I got Almeida by second round submission. I think he's He's going to use that first round to let Lewis gas himself and die out a little bit. He's going to get his timing down for that takedown, and then it's over for Lewis. Uh, so Almeida, second round, TKO. I'm sorry, and second I, round I can't submission. say the difference between our picks is him sinking that arm under the chin or saying, fuck it, and he starts wailing on him from the yeah. back. That yeah. is the only difference in our picks. I'm just guessing that he says, all right, I'm not going to gas my arms out. I'm going to punch your face in, and Lewis will be gas. Which is also very so, possible. Yeah. But to, to start the second round, I think is a good one. I don't think Derek Lewis comes out and lays an egg in Brazil. And I don't think Almeida destroys him in the first round either. So I like it to start the second. All right. Let's stay with Bill. Bill, give us your locks, your parlays, and your DraftKings sleeper. Okay. Uh, my Obviously, my one lock we've already talked about is Gabriel Bonfim. It's a 100% lock. He is, I, again, I love Dalby. Great fighter. He's going into a lion's den on that one. Um, another lock is another prelim female fight. Uh, if you scroll to the bottom, the, she's also a heavy favorite. It's Eduardo Mora is fighting Montserrat Ruiz, who's been nothing but a disappointment. And if you watch Montserrat Ruiz's last fight, she is horrible on the ground, and she's fighting a submission master in Eduardo Mora. So Eduardo Mora is also another lock. Uh, moving up. For the drafting sleeper, throwing downtown maze, what the hell. Uh, for a parlay, take Bonf and Mora. I'm going to go a little bit out of order here. Renat Barajo, I like Gomez to beat Angela Hill. Uh, Bonf and Almeida. Very nice, very nice. All right, Stacks, what you got um, in your locks and your parlays? Yeah, so I don't have a sleeper this week. I I don't have enough faith in any of them to, also to do that statement. this week. Um, however, uh, so my locks, Bond theme, I'm going to go with Almeida as a lock, uh, and, and Mora, obviously she's, I feel like she's just going to decimate that fight. Um, and then for my parlay, I've got Almeida, Bond theme, Barrow, uh, Mora. I did put Renat on there and Gomes. Very nice. Okay. Now to the quasi champ. All right, the 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 the, the fitty fitty guy. Quasi evil, Scotty. Yeah, yeah. What do you, what do you, what do you got for us? 
You know, I'm going to give you my DraftKings sleeper, and it's only because this favor has been such a disappointment to me throughout his career. But um, Kawhi Fernandez against Mark Dykes. Mark Dykes fights very boring, and I'm probably saying his last name wrong. Maybe he should knock a couple people out if he wants his name said right. But um, first fight of the night, I like the underdog in that one. So there's my DraftKings sleeper. My locks are going to be um, Eduardo Mora over Montserrat Ruiz. If Montserrat Ruiz can't get you into a brawl like you're in a back alley or a hip toss, she's done. So um, she's also way outsized. And then uh, I also have Renat Fakratinov as a lock. The uh, Gabriel Bomb team, and then the round, if you can get under three and a half for Derek Lewis and Jelson Almeida, that's a lock. But uh, my parlay is going to be Eduardo Mora, um, Renat Fakratinov. I'm going to take Barajo over Magomedov. Bonfim and Almeida and Lewis under the distance. If you want a better payout, take Jelton Almeida by double chance or by finish. Boom. All right. All right. What do you got? You guys got anything else? Anything else on the UFC card before we switch over to the NFL? Hey, they took two of my favorite fights off the card. So Victor Hugo was my DraftKings sleeper. He's not fighting anymore. And then Bonfim was in my parlay, and he's not fighting anymore. So they literally, that happened inside of the last... 18 hours. All right. Well, we'll give our producer a couple of seconds here to get shit working because it took him out of half the show to do what he was supposed to do in the first place. But uh, we won't we won't comment too much more on that. But I'm sure I'll beat that nail. Uh, <laughs> All right. But uh, Stax is going to leave us because she don't give two shit about the NFL. But uh, hey, Cyborg, pleasure having you on. Thanks for your advice. Hopefully we win some money on fix. Right, get the hell out of here, and then uh, we're all gonna lose Sergeant Hulk now because apparently he's only good enough for UFC as well, too. But I'm, I'm sure he's gonna listen later and make a bunch of money off my picks. Uh, the last, absolutely, I am. The, the last time I put 700 on his pick, we lost. I'm just saying, all right. So, uh, everybody know. lost, everybody <laughs> lost. I I, well, you know what? I'm, I'm selfish, I lost. Okay, so there, take that. All right, <laughs> but hey, uh, enjoy your bullshit. uh. Enjoy your garrison, sergeant major, whatever you're doing. All right, go put out some fires and stack the broccoli. Yeah. <laughs> I hate your face. <laughs> get the hell out All of right, here. All right, guys. Take it easy. Yeah. All right. Well, we get to get into the NFL picks. And I am cool. super excited about this because I finally hit a lock parlay. And I finally hit all the locks. Like it just, I've been going two for three and three for four. And no, Joe, I didn't lock the Lions because every time I do, they lose. All right. Well, so I didn't, I didn't lock the Lions. And in because fact, you and I were texting during that game. And let me tell you something it was like a fucking sloppy Joe. Like, why couldn't they execute? God, all I'm, saying, right. all I'm saying is, I was down by five points in fantasy going into the second half of that game. Now I have Jared Goff and the Lions kicker. Okay, so I need I need Ow. five points to win fantasy. Golf scored 15 points in the first half, right? So I'm like, we're good. All right, I just need like a touchdown pass or a field goal, like whatever. Well, Jared Goff throws the first pass to the other team and it goes 75 yards the other way, whatever. That was okay. the best and offense the Raiders had all night. Right, and then and then he doesn't do shit. I'm talking nothing, and I'm talking drop passes. He had 0.65 points. That was okay. a bad game for him. That was a bad, a bad game. Bad half, right? He had a great first half. So 0. 0.65 points in the second half. And now let me top it, okay? Your kicker knuckleballs a 52-yard field goal through the uprights, okay? So now that gives me five points. So that 5.65 points put me 0. 0.65 points ahead of the other guy, all right? And then late in the fourth quarter, that same kicker missed a 20 yard field goal that had nothing to do with the game, except for the fact it lost me two points in fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> and I lost the you, week. You. <laughs> so, Joe, I'm going to say this politely fuck the Lions. Fuck a kicker. Yeah. All right. Like, 
it is what it is. Uh, but no, hit all three locks. Uh, and again, I usually get hot with the upsets earlier in the year, and I kind of figure this out as Vegas starts to realize the same shit that I kind of realized in the preseason. And, you know, the upsets get harder to pick uh, because Vegas has figured it out as well. But I got some good upsets. Uh, this scores. Let's, let's, this? Get let's get to it. All right, hey, so we're going over overseas or across the pond somewhere because, for, for God's sakes, in America, we don't play football at 9.30 on Sundays. Hell no. Starting off Sunday morning, good morning, gentlemen. Have your coffee. It's a 9.30 game between who? The Dolphins and the Chiefs. The Ooh, Chiefs I tell you minus two with a 50 over under. Kind of like that over. Yeah, and uh, what I like here is – the NFL finally got lucky with a Europe game. Like, here you go, man. Here are the powerhouses in the NFL. Yeah, buddy. So they're going to get it. But I'm going to take the Finns here in an upset because this is not a Chiefs home game, all right, as opposed to if it was in Arrowhead. But uh, I like the Finns here to just win outright. I think uh, I don't I don't know if they're going to be able to stop Miami. I just don't think they're going to be able to. Okay. Yeah, no, I I they and, and not to mention the Chiefs have not looked like Super Bowl contenders. They haven't. I'll say it. You know, they got Taylor Swift's boyfriend in Mahomes, but they, they haven't. They got no hey, time. If Taylor Swift shows up, yeah. Kelsey okay, so at one o'clock. Um we got the Bears going into New Orleans, and New Orleans is an Eight and a half point favorite over who? Not the Michigan State high school football champions over an actual NFL team. So the Saints are an eight and a half point favorite with a 41 and a half over under. How you think yeah, that? I don't I don't know if Vegas thinks that the Saints are gonna win like 10 to nothing in this game. But it's good. It's, I, I don't know where the eight and a half comes Eight and a half, from. eh? So it's gonna be a shutout. Yeah, I don't know where they get eight and a half from. Now obviously I could be wrong. I don't like that spread, but I'm going to circle the Saints here. They'll be in probably three of my parlays as money line. But uh, yeah, take it if you want. I don't. I wouldn't blame you if you locked that, but I'm not going. To. Tell you, they don't need my plug, but I'm a fan of this liquid Aloha. These Kona big. Oh waves. yeah, the big waves are awesome. That's wow. that's my that's my go to, bro. So we got the Cardinals going into Cleveland to play in real man weather, not Arizona, David. Uh, Cleveland is a 10 point favorite with a 38 and a half over under. Yeah, I'm gonna, gonna lock this. Um, you think it's gonna be a 13 nothing game? No, I'm gonna lock this one up. Uh, I think, I, think Browns, that, eh? I think the Browns cover this easy. So the Cards just traded away Dobbins to uh Minnesota, and they have they have Kyler Murray coming back for his first game. So I don't. I'm just I, I got I see some rustiness and I see some you know hesitation and again that Browns front four is no joke so have fun coming back to the NFL to, you know Kyler Murray against Lamar. against that front four so now is he athletic enough to prove me wrong sure but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna lock the Browns up here I think he's gonna be running a bit yeah a bit so now we got the Rams going into Green Bay couple of climate shock games going on here. Uh, Green Bay is a three-point favorite with a 38-and-a-half over-under. Yeah, they opened up as a one-and-a-half point dog at home. Interesting. But then Stafford, they're, it's leaning towards Stafford not playing. So mm -hmm. if Stafford doesn't play, which I agree with the Rams in this decision as a football fan because you can probably still beat Green Bay without Stafford, uh, if there is a bet to take in this game, seven games into the season for the Packers, where they had a bye week, out of five of five of those seven games, they have had a quarter where they didn't get a first down. Ouch! Right, and that's like that's pretty brutal to watch. Uh, and a lot of it is uh, a lot of it's drops. Uh, and again, people are screaming for coaches' heads, but is it it's not the coaches? The coach got the guy open. Right, like you could literally watch a montage of seven drops last week and three of them in the end zone. Yeah. Right. So it's like, I don't know. For you yeah, Packers fans that are not Nick, um, hey, look, even the Patriots are losing games. People get old. Things yeah. go into transition years. And do I like as a Lions fan to see the Packers at two and five? For an immature reason, maybe a little bit, but no, I like them to be good. 
I like them to be good. I like it when the Lions and the and the Packers were playing to see who went to the playoffs in the NFC. Um, and the Packers are just in a transition year. They went Hall of Fame quarterback, Hall of Fame quarterback, and now they're on now they're on a first year starter. So yeah, they'll, they'll be back. It, it's Green Bay. They, they'll make sure they're winning. Um, we got Minnesota going into Atlanta. Atlanta is a four point favorite with a thirty seven and a half over under. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna lock uh, the Falcons up here. All right. Uh, I don't understand other than stupid why you wouldn't bet the Falcons on this because the Vikings just lost Kirk Cousins and I don't uh, is Jefferson coming back? I don't think he's coming back yet. <coughs> Excuse me, but watch the injury report. Uh, I like the yeah, I like the Falcons here. Lock them up. Yeah, um, that was a bad one. Cousins done for the season. We got Seattle. Going into Baltimore, this should be a good one. Baltimore's a minus six at home with a 44 over under. Yeah, definitely the game that I want to put on and watch as a football fan. This is going to be a slugfest. It's going to be great. It all depends on which Lamar Jackson shows up. All right, the real deal, Lamar has only shown up one week so far, yet the team's still winning. I watched. Right? Yeah, uh, and he showed up against the best team in the NFC. So, like, like – Maybe that's what it was. Maybe he had to play up. So expect a big game from Lamar here. Uh, and I, I like the Ravens here. Not going to lock it, but uh, you're not an idiot if you picked them to cover six. Yeah, you know, and the next game is going to be one of my favorites at 1 o'clock, too. We got Tampa Bay going into Houston. Houston is a two-and-a-half-point favorite and a 40 over under. Who would have saw them being favored in week one in this game? Yeah. Oh, but before we get to that, it's a good point when you said the over under. I like the go back to the Packers Rams game. I like the under there. I like the under a lot. I don't think there's going to be any freaking points scored in that game. Um, but I almost want to lock that under. I'm going to go with the Texans here. Nice. All right. The Bucks are coming off a bye week, but I don't. I just the Texans are that team that. Huh, I'm not. I'm not going to put them in any parlay here. But if you, you if you made me bet, I'm going Texas. You know, if you're Tampa Bay, you're still going to play football in Texas, right? It's Texas and football, and the Texans are playing well. They're going to have a rocket crowd there, so uh, that should be fun to watch. We got Washington going into New England. New England is a three point favorite with a forty and a half over under. Yeah, again, which commanders are going to show up? And the commanders just did a fire sale. I fucking right. hate them. I they hate just that. they <laughs> just got rid of all of their defensive linemen. So uh, I don't know. I, I Patriots being favored is difficult for me, but I'm going to bet the Patriots here. Yeah, they got a little Albert Haynesworth PTSD is what they got. Yeah. Uh, we got Indy. Going to Carolina. Carolina is a two and a half point dog at home with a forty four over under. Oof. Yeah, this game is a, a, a flip a coin. Uh, who's going to show up? Is it the Panthers' defense or the Colts' offense? Uh, I, the Colts are putting up a lot of points this year, so I I like the Colts here in this game. Yeah, me too. All right, we got the heavyweight champion, a hole fans. Game of the freaking week. Dallas going into Philly. Philly's a three-point favorite at home with a 47 over-under. A little uh, little uh, stat here for you, uh, people watching, is Dak has won three straight games against the Eagles. Right? So Dak is not worried. And everybody knows I put a shit ton of money on the Cowboys until January. All right? And I have been making money on the Cowboys for three straight years. So upset alert, Cowboys are going to win this game. All right. In January, in January, they lose by two scores. But yeah. <laughs> I see it. I, I see it. They, they, the Cowboys look like they're clicking right now. Um, all right, we got the Giants going into the Las Vegas Raiders, who are an absolute mess after what my Lions did to them. They they suck. And you guys uh, beat them by nine. nine. A minus one and a half favorite at home with a thirty-seven and a half over under. See another. Yeah, here, but here's why I like the Raiders. I like the under in this game. Uh, I like the Raiders because their defense is very solid. Um, and the Giants offense is very bad. So I, 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 I like uh, the under here. If I had to bet something, I'd bet the under. But the Raiders, the Raiders are going to win this game with their backup quarterback. 
I think they're benching porn star Jimmy. I I, I think uh, if anybody's watched the game last week, Max Crosby, you can you can expect to get chipped in double teamed all game because he about ruined the Lions offense in the first half. Um, all right, we got Buff- another great game Sunday night. Buffalo going into Cincinnati. Cincinnati's a two and a half point favorite. Look like they turned it around with a 50 and a half over under. Yeah, lock this up. All right, the Bengals are going to beat the bank, uh, beat the Bills. All right, they're going to beat them. And I don't even think it's going to be a game. It might be a game at the end of the game, but not, not for the most part of it. I think this will be a – the Bengals controlling about three and a half quarters of this. Uh, and barring any, like, special teams or defensive touchdown, I, I don't see it. The Bengals are hot right now. Yeah. And the, bill, the Bills are not. So nope. uh, I, I really, really like the Bengals here to lock it up. All right, Monday night, um, we got the Chargers on primetime again. Going into New York to play the Jets. The Jets are a three-and-a-half-point home dog with a 40 over-under. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it why the why they're primetime. Uh, this was supposed to be, you know, Chargers versus Aaron Rodgers and the Jets. But guess what? The Jets are, what, four and three? Is that what that says? Yeah, they are they they are That's winning. Correct. You that are is. correct. And now the Chargers with the same amount of talent are not four and three because they keep blowing games just like they did against Jacksonville in the playoffs. Um, but I'm gonna go with the Chargers here. I just I man, I don't want to because of how bad they blow shit, but I I I'm I'll bet on the Chargers one. It's 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 a pretty good hedge bet. So I'll put the Chargers money line on every one of my parlays and then hedge it with the Jets if I'm hitting any of them, like 100%. But, yeah, there you have it with the picks. Uh, so, again, my locks are the Bengals, the Browns. Wow. The Bengals and Browns are locks. Where have we come? Lock All right, so Ohio. Bengals, Browns, and then the Falcons. All right, so I pretty much just locked the three teams 10 years ago that sucked like horribly. So that's a, that's a lot of fun to see that. I would lock the, the, the lions, but they're not playing and I'm not doing that. I'm not touching them anymore. Just they've ruined my, they've ruined my fantasy life. Uh, all right. But big shout out to uh, Bill and Sergeant Hulka, as we call him, uh, the mad Russian. He left us, but we'll still plug his charity. All right. Look at uh, gold star teen adventures. Uh, just again, again, it's a great organization. It's run by an active duty colonel. Uh, like so, no money's going to him, and they just take care of now, you know, young adults from the global war on terrorism. All right, young adults, and some of them are much more than young adults because they were 15 in 2003, 2004. So you know, our hearts always go out to them and to their families. And, you know, may your loved ones lost never be forgotten. They're never forgotten on Veteran Trash Talk. But, uh, yeah, just go to Gold Star Teen Adventures. And if you want to donate some money, that is a true nonprofit that will do the best. Uh, and then what is the other one? The, the What does he say for the blue? Uh, race for the blue? <sighs> help them run blue to remember. Race oh, we're, we're blue. Uh, blue run to remember. Uh, yeah, that's another one for first responders. And again, those of you who watch the fight show, uh, VTT's Drunken Cyborg, or listening to us on our podcast. Again, hey, go on Apple Podcast and download us. All right, you'll get all the audio as long as our producer isn't sleeping and actually uploads it. So, uh, <laughs> but, but, you know, go download Apple Podcast and follow us there uh, or Spotify or whatever. Uh, just make sure you're, uh, you know, if you don't want to watch our, our beautiful faces, right? Just give us a listen to speaking of beautiful faces. We have a great show tomorrow. All right. We have Josh white, all right. Who is the face of the United States air force. And we are going to bring him on because I think we actually found somebody who is prettier than Dave. I was gonna all say, right. Beautiful. Yeah, and so I I wrote in the script, I go, Dave, you need to assert your dominance right from the beginning, like Zoolander style, because this guy is the new Hansel, all right? So hot right now. So hot right now. Feel from the beginning, see if you can't get this guy like a deer in the headlights. (laughs) From the beginning, all right? So, Dave, better better put the vodka down tonight and do your hair, all right? So, because this guy's going to be coming in. 
Yeah, this guy's going to be coming in good looking. Uh, so we'll see you guys tomorrow, 1700, and get your bets in. Thanks for watching and listening. And now, a word from our sponsor, Four Patriots. In a startling description, the UN food chief warned the world with the words knocking on famine's door. He called what we're facing a perfect storm of a perfect storm. And he's not alone. Barron's published that a food shortage could be coming, even in the U.S. Farmers see it, too. John Boyd Jr., a fourth-generation farmer, told Fox News that we're going to see empty food shelves in the coming months. That's why getting survival food is more important than ever now. Create your own stockpile of the best-selling Four Patriots Survival Food Kits. It's not ordinary food. We're talking good for 25 years super survival food. Hand-packed in a family-owned facility in the USA and giving jobs to over 200 Americans. They have different delicious breakfasts, lunches, dinners. You can make these meals in less than 20 minutes. Just add boiling water, simmer, and serve. And right now, for the next few days, listeners of the Veteran Trash Talk podcast will get 10% off their first order at 4 by using the code VTTGW. Go to 4 and use the code VTTGW to start your stockpile today.